All right, here we go. Part three, chapter seven. We left off with Myra choosing, well, no, not choosing anybody, but Elia choosing for her. Elia said, choose Igor, which is odd since he worked for two months to try to marry her. Or is it odd? Stanley digging his first hole, not going well. Blisters on blisters. Holes not getting dug because the dirt's not in the right place. He keeps having to move this big pile of dirt over. Hungry, pained, and now he's going to find a place to go to the bathroom, trying to avoid yellow spotted lizards or scorpions or rattlesnakes. Sounds like a fun summer day. Let's find out what happens. Part three, chapter seven. I'm on page 36, about halfway down at the gap. After leaving Myra's house, Elia wandered aimlessly through the town till he found himself down by the wharf. Good word for vocabulary. He sat on the edge of a pier and stared down into the cold, black water. He could not understand how Myra had trouble deciding between him and Igor. He thought she loved him. Even if she didn't love him, couldn't she see what a foul person Igor was? It was like Madame Zeroni had said. Her head was as empty as a flower pot. Simile. Comparing her head to something that you don't normally compare a head to, an empty flower pot, although it fits with this one. Some men were gathering on another dock, and he went to see what was going on. A sign read, Deckhands Wanted, Free Passage to America. He had no sailing experience, but the ship's captain signed him aboard. The captain could see that Elia was a man of great strength. Not everybody could carry a full-grown peg up the side of the mountain. It wasn't until the ship had cleared the harbor and was heading out across the Atlantic that he suddenly remembered his promise to carry Madame Zeroni up the mountain. He felt terrible. He wasn't afraid of the curse. He thought that was a lot of nonsense. He felt bad because he knew Madame Zeroni had wanted to drink from the stream before she died. Uh-oh, that no good, dirty, rotten, pig-stealing great-great-grandfather. Was he no good? Was he dirty, rotten? Did he steal a pig? Really, the only thing true about that statement is great-great-grandfather. Let me read that last sentence, and then we'll continue. After the gap, again, heading back to Stanley. He felt bad because he knew Madame Zeroni had wanted to drink from the stream before she died. Zero was the smallest kid in Group D, but he was the first one to finish digging. You're finished? Stanley asked enviously. Zero said nothing. Stanley walked to Zero's hole and watched him measure it with a shovel. The top of his hole was a perfect circle. The, inside, the sides were smooth and steep. Not one dirt clod, more than necessary, had been removed from the earth. Zero pulled himself up to the surface. He didn't even smile. He looked down at his perfectly dug hole, spat in it, then turned and headed back to the camp compound. Zero's one weird dude. Zigzag, said Zigzag. Stanley would have laughed, but he didn't have the strength. Zigzag had to be the weirdest dude Stanley had ever seen. He had a long, skinny neck, big round head with wild, frizzy blonde hair that stuck out in all directions. His head seemed to bob up and down on his neck, like it was on a spring or a zigzag. Armpit was the second one finished digging. He also spat into his hole before heading back to ca the camp compound. One by one, Stanley watched each of the boys spit into his hole and return to the camp compound. Stanley kept digging. His hole was almost up to his shoulders, although it was hard to tell exactly where ground level was because his dirt piles completely surrounded the hole. The deeper he got, the harder it was to raise the dirt up and out of the hole. Once again, he realized he was going to have to move his piles. His cap was stained with blood from his hands. He felt like he was digging his own grave. Um, so we have another space. We're going to flash back to Elia again. So you can see, really, this whole chapter 
is all about this ordeal that Stanley's going through and also about Elia's ordeal from when he was really Stanley's age. So you can see there's a lot of similarities between Elia and Stanley. Both seem to be, the character trait-wise, really good people. Uh, Elia wanted to get married, you know, he saw this pretty girl and she didn't pick him. Uh, so he's off to America, he made a mistake, he really wanted to help Madame Zeroni, he just forgot because he was so upset. And you have, again, Stanley kind of in this situation because he's trying to help his dad. And now he's digging this hole and not doing very well. And you can see he's kind of looking at everyone else as he's got to move the piles over again because they're falling into his hole. So he's got to dig the hole really two or three times, it seems like. Back to Elia. In America, Elia learned to speak English. He fell in love with a woman named Sarah Miller. She could push a plow, milk a goat, and most important, think for herself just like Madame Zeroni said. She and Elia often stayed up half the night talking and laughing together. Their life was not so easy. Elia worked hard, but bad luck seemed to follow him everywhere. Like a curse. He always seemed to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. He remembered Madame Zeroni telling him that she had a son in America. Elia was forever looking for him. He walked up to complete strangers and asked if they knew, some, knew someone named Zeroni. Or had ever heard of anyone named Zeroni. No one did. Elia wasn't sure what he'd do if he ever found Madame, Madame Zeroni's son anyway. Carry him up a mountain and sing the pig lullaby to him? After his barn was struck by lightning for the third time, he told Sarah about his broken promise to Madame Zeroni. I'm worse than a pig thief. No good, dirty, rotten pig stealing, he said. You should leave me and find someone who isn't cursed. I'm not leaving you, said Sarah, but I want you to do one thing for me. Anything, said Elia. Sarah smiled. Sing me the pig lullaby. He sang it to her. Her eyes sparked. Remember, we haven't heard it yet. It was that song that Madame Zeroni wanted to sing to her. Um, or the song that he sang to the pig, too. Her eyes sparkled. That's so pretty. What does it mean? Elia tried best to translate it from Latvian into English, but it wasn't the same. It rhymes in Latvian, he told her. I could tell, said Sarah. A year later, their child was born. Sarah named him Stanley because she noticed that Stanley was Yelnats, spelled backward. Sarah changed the words of the pig lullaby so that they rhymed, and every night she sang it to little Stanley. If only, if only, the woodpecker sighs, the bark on the tree was as soft as the skies, while the wolf waits below, hungry and lonely, crying to the moo oo oon if only, if only. So Madame Zeroni taught Elia this song, and Elia sang it to his wife, and she turned it into the song that they passed down through uh, Stanley's family. Space, back to Stanley. So as unlucky as Elia was, and maybe made for the rest of his family, he's got a great wife who loves him, he's got this great son, uh, so his, maybe his life isn't as bad as he thinks. Stanley's hole was as deep as a shovel, but not quite wide enough on the bottom. He grimaced as he sliced off a chunk of dirt, then raised it up and flung it onto the pile. He laid his shovel back down on the bottom of his hole, and to his surprise, it fit. He rotated it and only had to chip off a few chunks of dirt here and there before it could lie flat across the hole in every direction. He heard the water truck approaching and felt a strange sense of pride at being able to show Mr. Sir or Mr. Pendansky that he had dug his first hole. He put his hands on the rim and tried to pull himself up. He couldn't do it. His arms were too weak to lift his heavy body. He used his legs to help, but he just didn't have any strength. He was trapped in his hole. It was almost funny, but he wasn't in a mood to laugh. Stanley, he heard Mr. Pendansky call. Using his shovel, he dug two footholds in the hole wall. He climbed out to see Mr. Pendansky walk over to him. I was afraid you'd fainted, Mr. Pendansky said. You wouldn't have been the first. I'm finished, Stanley said, putting his blood-spotted cap back on his head. 
All right, said Mr. Pendansky, raising his hand for a high five. But Stanley ignored it. He didn't have the strength. Mr. Pendansky lowered his hand and looked down at Stanley's hole. Well done, he said. Well done. You want to ride back? Stanley shook his head. I'll walk. Mr. Pendansky climbed back into the truck without filling Stanley's canteen. Stanley waited for him to drive away, then took another look at his hole. He knew it was nothing to be proud of, but he felt proud nonetheless. He sucked up his last bit of saliva and spat. So Ellie is in the new world. Stanley dug his first hole. And that ends chapter seven. We will pick up on chapter eight, a very short chapter talking about curses after this. Think of setting. So that whole chapter really took place in one setting. Stanley at Camp Green Lake on the lake digging a hole from the morning until the afternoon. Um, we did flash back, so we did kind of go back to Latvia. We're not really there, but it is an interesting fl uh, flashback to see kind of what started all this for the Elnats family. All right, on to chapter eight.